In this video, we will try to describe the idea of fugacity, why it's important, where it comes from, why we're interested in you. And we'll start out by looking at two phases, an alpha phase and a beta phase. We won't specify any more about the phases right now. But what we're showing is the concentration of component A in each of the phases. And initially, these phases are not in equilibrium. And the question is, which direction does component A move? What's direction of mass transfer to get to equilibrium? We're always looking at how systems approach equilibrium. And in this case, we might look and say, well, a very high concentration of A in this phase, we might expect mass transfer to go to the lower concentration. However, for this particular system, if this was this phase was water vapor and this phase was liquid water and we were at 45 degrees C, then mass transfer would be in this direction because this concentration, if we look at steam tables, is actually higher than saturation pressure. So equilibrium would be a decrease to saturation pressure. And so, so this means we can't use concentration as our determination of direction of mass transfer. Certainly concentration matters in that it affects fugacity, but we're going to use fugacity or chemical potential as our determining factor. If the chemical potential is higher in the alpha phase than the beta phase, so chemical potential in the alpha is higher than the beta, and therefore mass transfer goes from alpha to beta. And another way of looking at this, it means the fugacity of water is higher in the alpha phase than the beta phase. So the chemical potential is related to the Gibbs free energy, and we use Gibbs free energy look at this a couple of ways, but the get energy in the vapor phase would be the enthalpy per mole or per kilogram vapor phase minus the temperature times the entropy in the vapor phase. And at equilibrium, that enthalpy in the liquid phase minus TS, so G in the vapor phase, G in the liquid phase, those are equal at equilibrium. That turns out to be our criteria for equilibrium. If we rearrange this equation, we know it's H vapor minus H liquid over temperature is vapor minus S liquid, which means delta H vaporization over temperature is equal to delta S vaporization. Heat of vaporization divided by temperature is the entropy change of vaporization. This is how we originally derived entropy, where entropy change we defined as dq reversible over t, and for phase change, t is constant, q is delta h, and we carry out vaporization at constant pressure. And so, so this equation follows from our definition of entropy, shows us the Gibbs free is the same in both phases. So let's look at how we get fugacity from Gibbs free energy, and we'll, we'll go back to the first law, Closed reversible system, change in internal energy, differential change is the heat at it and the work at it. If it's reversible, then we can write dq in terms of entropy change. And again, if it's reversible, we can write work as minus PdV. Now, delta H is defined as delta U plus delta PV, or dH is du plus dPV. So we can make the substitution from d. These two terms cancel, and dH is TDS plus VD. And now one more step, dG, dH. So we're making the same type, again, substitution, dH, TDS plus VDP minus TDS minus SDT. So the change, differential change in Gibbs free energy and then again, you notice this term cancels, VDP minus SDT. And so what we're going to look at a lot of our calculations is what happens if we change the constant temperature. Then DP is VDP. So we can calculate the change in Gibbs free energy from volume and pressure changes at constant temperature. And get, for example, an idea what the change is going to look like 
And DG for an ideal gas is RT over P dp well, remember the volume i'm using here is the specific volume the volume per mole so rt dp over p and so this means change in gibbs free energy for an ideal gas is rt d log of p and so what's been done then for real gas is to say we like this form so we're going to introduce a new variable called the fugacity it's the value we put in here to make the Gibbs free energy change correct for gas. So if we were to subtract these two equations, the real and the ideal, and just divide by RT to make dimensionless, then the right side we'd have d log fugacity over pressure, and this is the fugacity coefficient, a dimensionless variable. So if we were to go back and remember that our constant temperature dg is vdp, we could subtract that equation for oil gas, so that's all this real ideal gas, and we could write this in terms of a compressibility factor z, and compressibility factor is one for an ideal gas, dp, so z minus one, or p, p P tells us this change in difference between ideal gas and real gas. Note that as pressure approaches zero, then G approaches the ideal gas value. So the real gas value and the ideal gas value gives free energy the same at low pressures where gases become ideal gases. So this means an ideal gas, the few gas is just the pressure. For real gas, we have to use information like the equation of state, integrate this, determine the fugacity because we have change in Gibbs free energy in terms of Z. We also have it in terms of fugacity pressure. And, and so we combine these equations and won't go through the details. Then fugacity, the given pressure for an ideal gas is equal to this integral, zero to the pressure interested in compressibility factor minus one. P over P. So we use the equation of state. We can do this integration and determine fugacity for a real gas, any pressure. Ideal gas, we know the fugacity. So the question is for liquid, what is the fugacity? So the thing that is critical is to keep in mind what we showed way back here. Gibbs free energy and liquid and the vapor are the same at equilibrium. So we're looking at a one component system. If the Gibbs free energy in a liquid equals the Gibbs free energy in a vapor, that means from our definitions, the fugacity in a liquid is fugacity in a vapor. And so at vapor liquid equilibrium, we have both phases present. The fugacity in the vapor is going to be the saturation pressure if it's an ideal gas. That means the fugacity in liquid is the saturation pressure if indeed. The saturation pressure is low enough that we can assume ideal gas. So now we have fugacity in a vapor for an ideal gas. We have a way of calculating fugacity for a gas that's not ideal if we have more information about how non ideal it is. And then for liquid, saturation conditions to fugacity is the pressure. For liquid, a higher pressure. So liquid where the pressure is greater than saturation pressure. First thing to realize is not much changes. So the, the range increase the pressure, entropy, internal energy, entropy, etc. Don't change. And since G is H minus T S, if enthalpy and entropy don't change much, it means the Gibbs free energy doesn't change very much. And so indeed is a small change. And this small change in the interest of time here, the fugacity would be fugacity at saturation pressure, which is going to be very close to saturation pressure. And then just from that definition, we have this exponential. This term is close to one. And so it takes high pressures to change the fugacity very much for the liquid phase.
है ओके सो दिस डज दैट हेल्प मीडिया टू आंसर हेल्प हुआ उससे वीडियो से understood what was that video nahi sir itna samajh nahi aa raha nahi sir itna samajh mein nahi aaya okay um sab ka same problem hai theek hai yes so sir main think i think we should think about starting mein kya bataya usne he gave an example of two phases in eclipse right concentration was more in the liquid phase concentration was less in the vapor phase individually we felt that okay the mass transfer could take place from the liquid phase to the vapor phase whatever alpha and beta phase whatever but that does not the case because vapor phase mein saturation zyada tha concentration at that temperature so that is why the mass transfer was taking in the reverse direction so just looking at the concentration we cannot say in which direction the mass transfer will take place we have defined different terms like chemical potential and that is what is important for mass transfer right so just like if you see uh let me share this one Can you see this white screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir. Right. So you are able to see this because uh, last time I showed uh, Microsoft whiteboard, you are not able to see. That's why I'm asking you. So let's see. If I take temperature, what does it? Temperature shows what? what is it used for temperature is for what heat transfer me kaagli use karte temperature hum what is the temperature indicator of what the hotness of ah Degree of hotness. Degree of hotness of the body. Degree of hotness. Yes. Starting, I said when we started figure city, temperature is a what you call used for thermal. Heat. Measure of how fast molecules are. So if you if you really see, Q is equal to some function of temperature, right? ठीक है है पढ़ा ना आपने टेम्परेचर इज अ ड्राइविंग फोर्स फॉर हीट ट्रांसफर इफ टेम्परेचर डिफरेंस इज नॉट देयर देन देयर इज नो हीट ट्रांसफर सिमिलरली इफ यू हैव फ्लो एलिमेट्रिक फ्लो रेट इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ प्रेशर और प्रेशर ड्रॉप बराबर 
Yes, okay, so what you see here is the temperature is the cause and this is the effect. So if there is no temperature driving force, there is no heat transfer. So cause is the reason why heat transfer takes place is because there is a temperature difference. Similarly, reason why flow, liquid flows or gas flows or vapor flows is because there is a driving force in terms of pressure drop or pressure drop gradient. Right? Similarly, if you want to talk about mass transfer, now we need to define some gradient, right? Some cause, and that we define as chemical potential. Not concentration. This may Q mu may be having some relationship with concentration, but actually the driving force for mass transfer is chemical potential. And chemical potential we have seen is related <laughs> pressure for ideal gas, and uh, we have defined as fugacity for real gas. So ultimately you want to see that mass transfer jo hai, your reaction jo hai, wo kaisa ho hai. So if you want to define this M term mass transfer, you need to have some way to define this gradient or driving force for mass transfer or reaction. And that is what we are doing right now. We are, we are defining chemical potential which is partial molar Gibbs free energy because Gibbs free energy is a net work available in any system. Right? Mass transfer के लिए भी work करना पड़ेगा, so work available है तो mass transfer होगा, reaction के लिए भी some work has to be done कुछ, see सब, there's no, there's nothing without input right, input has to be some work, some energy, and the Gibbs energy is that energy which is driving mass transfer, phase equilibria, chemical equilibria, and that is why we are saying that okay we need to define something, we cannot use concentration, concentration is not the driving force for mass transfer, we have defined another term which is really the driving force, which is chemical potential. Partial molar gas energy. That is what is the indicator of energy for fluid flow, fluid phase equilibria, and chemical equilibria. Okay. When we have to define karayam, yes, of chemical potential, and then finding a relation of chemical potential to fugacity because. Chemical potential for ideal gas, we have seen it is RT ln T pressure. So for ideal gas, we can definitely find chemical potential from pressure. But for real gases, we cannot find that. We see here, we have done this yesterday. So what we call is Dg is equal to RT dLmP. So if you know ideal gases, you can find change in Gibbs free energy based on pressure because we need to see measurable quantities. Chemical potential cannot be measured. So we have to have measurable quantities like pressure, temperature, volume, which can be easily measured, which can be used to find these terms, which are indicators of uh, why we are defining this? Ideal gas scale pressure can be used as a means to calculate the energy change. So that's a similar we define for real gas because real gas pressure is not important. What is important is we are defining as fugacity. Pressure for ideal gas. Sonia. Is it okay? Is it clear? Yes, no, don't know. Answer has to be there. Silence is not an answer. 
यस तो थोड़ा बहुत समझना है यस सर हुज दैट दीक्षित आ समझ में आया यस यस सर यस सर मुर्तजा शिवानी हाँ सर समझा सो जस्ट लाइक वी डिफाइन टेम्परेचर एज ए ड्राइविंग फोर्स फॉर हीट ट्रांसफर and pressure as a driving force for what fluid flow similarly we have defined a driving force for mass transfer and chemical reaction and that driving force is chemical potential but because it is not measurable we cannot measure it so we have to define it in terms of something else so we start with ideal gas which is easy to use you know everything about ideal gases so from ideal gas we derive an equation for change in gives free energy because we know that uh, once you know the gives free energy we can find out chemical potential because vg and mu are related right so we are going indirectly from pressure to dg and then we get chemical potential for ideal gas it is easy because we have a relationship we can use this thermo equation dg is equal to vdp minus sdt and we get this equation but for real gases we cannot use pressure because pressure is a, not a correct indicator of uh, driving force so we define another term which is called effective pressure and that is called fugacity okay so now if you want to find out change in gives free energy from state 1 to state 2 It is related to frequency one and frequency two. What we will get is G two minus G one is delta G or change in gives free energy is equal to R T L N F two by F one, right? So if you if you know how to define F one frequency in for one state, you can find frequency in second state because we can measure free energy change going from state one to state two. So, frequency any state can be evaluated in the, if the frequency is assigned a specific value in a particular reference as standard state. As I said, reference, just a temperature may have you defined zero degrees and hundred degrees, right? This is essentially arbitrarily defined. So, we define when I say zero degrees as a melting point of ice, then I can say that relative to ice, how hot is the temperature? How much more is the temperature? Okay, so when you say five degrees, it's a little bit more. So it's relative. Yes, everything is relative because there is no absolute thing. There is no absolute temperature. We have not defined it, but first we define centigrade. Right? So we defined or we divided the scale between boiling point and freezing point into hundred equal divisions, and that tells us that how the temperature varies. Is it close to boiling point? Is it close to freezing point? Is it in between there? How much is the temperature? Similarly, if we define for frequency some standard state. Or F1, then we can find out how much is F2. Okay, so if you look at ideal gas, delta G is R T L N P2 by P1. So this this equation is applicable for ideal gases, and this equation, equation three, is applicable for real gases as well as ideal gases. Real gas is ideal gas at low pressure. Remember. Right? So when I say this equation is applicable for real gases, that means it can be applied for ideal gases also, because any real gas reduces to ideal gas at low pressure. Right. So if we compare equation three and four, what we get is for ideal gases, F2 by F1 is equal to P2 by P1. Right. That means frequency is proportional to pressure, directly proportional to pressure. So now we have a way to find out frequency for any gas, right? So if you know, if you can measure the pressure, then we can find out the frequency of any gas at any pressure, and that's how we go about it. So this is the relation F is equal to K into P, 
and for ideal gas k is equal to 1 that means because it is equal to pressure and that is how we define a standard state that means if you say the pressure is very low or gas is behaving like an ideal gas then the fugacity of that gas at that pressure is equal to pressure understood sir wo s is equal to p kaise aaya ha hello s is equal to p kaise aaya wo nahi samjha matlab k1 kab hota hai ye f2 by f1 equal to p2 by p1 hai ha sir ye do equation compare kiya humne equation 3 is delta g is equal to rt ln f2 by f1 this is for real gases right and for ideal gases delta g is equal to rt ln p2 by p1 now if you apply both these equations to ideal gas because real gas is also ideal at low pressure right so do the equation agar humne ideal gas ko apply kiye to left hand side same hai rt rt cancel ho jayega so ln f2 by f1 equal to ln p2 by p1 that means f2 by f1 is equal to p2 by p1 for ideal gas right so f2 is equal to p2 and f2 is some constant due to p2 right you can say f2 by f1 is equal to p2 by p2 that means fugacity और एफ इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू प्रेशर जैसे हम लिखते हैं ना वी टू बाई वी वन इज इक्वल टू आर्ट आइडियल गैस के लिए इक्वल टू आर्ट लिया राइट इफ इट प्रेशर कांस्टेंट व्हाट हैपन्स हाउ इज वॉल्यूम रिलेटेड टू टेम्परेचर वी वन बाई वी टू इज इक्वल टू टी वन बाई टी टू यस सिमिलरली एफ टू बाई फन इक्वल टू पी टू बाई पी वन राइट तो उसमें क्या है वॉल्यूम इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू टेम्परेचर राइट For ideal gas at constant pressure, यहाँ पर fugacity is proportional to pressure. Right? Pressure बढ़ेगा तो fugacity बढ़ेगा, pressure कम होगा तो fugacity कम होगा. Understood? Yes sir. हाँ sir, वो state नहीं समझा मुझे कि k is equal to one वो कब होता है एफ इज इक्वल टू पी फॉर आई करते हैं बिकॉज वी नो वी नो फॉर आइडियल गैस दिस इक्वेशन राइट आइडियल गैस के लिए इक्वेशन हमने डिराइव किया है डेल्टा जी को आर टी एल एन पी टू बाई पी वन राइट ये डिराइव किया हमने राइट नो इफ यू टेक जयपुट एफ पी इज इक्वल टू एफ बाई के यहाँ पर प्रेशर के ऊपर एफ बाई के डाला तो क्या हो जाएगा F2 टू बाई के डिवाइड बाई एफ वन बाई के बराबर के के कैंसिल हो जाएगा गेट एफ टू बाई एफ वन ये इक्वल टू कब हो जाएगा वेन 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 विल दिस इक्वेशन बिकम इक्वल टू वन इक्वेशन थ्री इक्वल टू क्वेश्चन फोर कब होगा इक्वेशन थ्री में क्या है आर टी एल एन एफ टू बाई एफ वन राइट नाउ दिस इक्वेशन इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर आइडियल गैस एज वेल एज रियल गैस राइट दोनों के लिए एप्लीकेबल है एंड दिस इक्वेशन एप्लीकेबल ओनली फॉर आइडियल गैस सो इफ यू टेक आइडियल गैस इक्वेशन थ्री एंड फोर हैज टू बी इक्वल फॉर आइडियल गैस करेक्ट यस सर राइट एंड व्हेन विल दैट बी व्हेन विल इक्वेशन थ्री बी इक्वल टू इक्वेशन फोर फॉर आइडियल गैस फिजिकल टू प्री Whenever when f is f two is equal to p two and f one is equal to p one, then only this equation is equal to equation four. Yes, sir, got it. Right. So that means we define we in that case we say that for ideal gas k is equal to one and therefore f is equal to p for ideal gas. This is the only only condition under which those two equations be equal for ideal gas. Okay. And for real gas, F is not equal to KP. We cannot take K equal to one for real gas. It is only for ideal gas. K is equal to one, right? Or you can say that F by P is not equal to constant for real gas. But for ideal gas, it is equal to constant, which is one. So as the pressure is reduced, the behavior of real gas approaches ideal gas. It means we have said that when the pressure. I give you an example last week, right? Or two days ago. 
when the pressure is high the molecules are closer to each other when they are close to each other the force of attraction and repulsion is very strong and that is why you cannot use the pressure as an indicator of mechanical equilibrium right so when the pressure is reduced to zero or one atmosphere the molecules are quite far apart the force of attraction and repulsion are not strong and it behaves like an ideal gas any real gas will behave like an ideal gas at low pressure okay so at low pressure the density of real gas is equal to pressure right so we said that then for ideal gas also it is fugacity is equal to pressure at low pressure any real gas becomes like an ideal gas so fugacity of real gas at low pressure is equal to pressure uh, at low pressure is equal to actual pressure theek okay? hai so gas at very low pressure p0 is chosen as reference state and we say that the gasity by pressure is equal to 1 at low pressure f by p is equal to 1 when the gas real gas approaches ideal gas then only what will happen is pressure the gasity will be equal to pressure so then we define fugacity as limit when pressure tends to zero fugacity upon pressure is equal to 1 that's what we are saying right at low pressure fugacity is equal to pressure or f by p tends to 1 as p right, tends to zero so at very low pressures near about one atmosphere or so the fugacity is equal to pressure and that's how we actually define the standard state of fugacity so standard state of real gas is a hypothetical state in which the gas is at a pressure p0 where it behaves ideally so when you reduce the pressure of any real gas if you take pressure uh, gas at say 10 atmosphere or 100 atmosphere and reduce the pressure to 1 atmosphere it will start behaving like a ideal gas and that is a standard state for fugacity can me aage yes sir 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 high pressure hoga to kaise expect karte rahenge fugacity nahi high pressure pe fugacity is not equal to pressure that we'll see we'll derive equation we'll see what is the effect of pressure on fugacity and then you'll see just like we did for chemical potential we will see what is the effect of pressure on fugacity and then you will see what is the effect so at low pressure fugacity is equal to pressure but at high pressure fugacity is not equal to pressure and that is why we are defining all these things theek okay. hai any doubts questions before we proceed further क्लियर है इतना इज इट क्लियर और इज देर एनी डाउट यू सी सम एग्जांपल्स आल्सो देन यू विल सी रियलाइज व्हेन द प्रेशर इंक्रीजेस हाउ द फिगरसिटी चेंजेस देयर आर सम एग्जांपल्स व्हिच यू विल सी just for the time being remember that at low pressure the gas is equal to pressure when the gas behaves like an ideal gas and at high pressure the gas is not equal to pressure and we'll see how to get the fugacity for high pressure okay so we define fugacity coefficient which is equal to f by p which is equal to phi right and we have derived dg is equal to defined fugacity as dg equal to rt ln f so we integrate between low pressure p0 p superscript 0 to p what will get is integral from f0 to f so what we get is g minus g0 is equal to rt ln f by f0 since at low pressure very low pressure f0 is equal to p0 and f is equal to fugacity into p right we have defined f by p is equal to fugacity coefficient right 
So we can replace this g minus g zero is equal to R T L N f is equal to phi into p and f zero is equal to p zero. So what we'll get is R T L N p by p zero plus R T L N phi. Right. So you can take g zero on the other side and get what we call Gibbs free energy for a real gas. This is for ideal gas actually g zero. So for a real gas, Gibbs free energy is equal to g zero, which is for ideal gas, plus R T L N P by P zero plus R T L N phi. And we are seeing for ideal gas, P is equal to R T L N P. So if we integrate similar to the previous one between P zero and P, what we'll get is integral from g zero to g. R T L N D uh, R T D L N P integral from P zero to P. So what we get is G minus G zero is equal to R T L N P by P zero, which is for ideal gas. Right. So we can take this on the other side, and what we get is G for ideal gas is equal to G zero plus R T L N P by P zero, which is this term in this equation six. G zero plus R T L N P by P zero is nothing but Gibbs free energy for ideal gas. ठीक है? Is this okay? Question six and seven. Yes, no, don't know. Some yes, answers sir. from. Yes, sir. So what we'll do is we'll substitute for this g zero plus R T L N P by P zero in this equation. Sir, what is g in case of ideal gas? Pandit. Pandit. G in the case of ideal gas. We have seen this, no? Yeah, no. R T L N P. You've seen this for ideal gas. G is equal to R T L N P plus C. This for real gas, ideal gas. के लिए यहाँ पर P आ जाएगा pressure. Gives you energy. That's how we define, no? Starting from there only we read that. G is equal to R T L N P. क्या डाउट क्या था आपका हेलो सर जी एंड जी नॉट लिखा था ना इक्वेशन में सो जी नॉट इज फॉर आइडियल गैस जी इज फॉर रियल गैस सो आइडियल गैस के इक्वेशन में भी जी आया ना हाँ तो आइडियल गैस का था ये रियल गैस का है जब रिटर्न दिस फॉर आइडियल गैस सो दिस इज जी आइडियल आज का आई कैन राइट प्रॉब्लि सुपर सुपर आइडियल गैस यहाँ पर वो नहीं लिखा मैंने बिकॉज यू आर रिटर्न आइडियल गैस आई शुड राइट यूर जी फॉर आइडियल गैस डी जी फॉर आइडियल गैस इज गोट बी आर टी डी एल एन पी एंड दिस इज बी जी फॉर रियल गैस इज गो आर टी डी एल एन एफ लिखा है ना यहाँ पर रियल गैस के लिए मैंने यहाँ सिंबल नहीं डाला रियल गैस दिस इज फॉर रियल गैस समझा क्या That's exactly why we defined fugacity. But because for real gas, we cannot use pressure to calculate this Gibbs free energy. So we have defined fugacity for real gas instead of pressure for ideal gas. Yes, sir. Doubt clear? What can you do? Yes, sir. Okay, let's see where are we. Okay, right. So from this equation, we get G equal to G zero plus R T L N P by P zero. This for ideal gas. We just we can write superscript ideal gas, right? Here, what is it? G for real gas. 
is for G for real gas is equal to this is nothing but G for ideal gas plus RTL and phi. So G for real gas is equal to G for ideal gas plus RTL and phi from this equation. This was G for real gas. G0 plus RTL and P by P0 is G for ideal gas plus RTL and phi. Okay, have you doubt clear work? Yes, yes. So essentially RT ln phi is the effect of intermolecular forces which is occurring in real gases. Ideal gas ka to pata hai ko kya hota hai. So we are basically accounting for intermolecular forces which we talked about in real gases by using this term RT ln phi. And all our gases behave as ideal gas acts, pressure approaches zero or low pressure. Right? And we have seen luminosity tends to pressure as P approaches zero. Similarly, because luminosity coefficient is nothing but F by P. So if luminosity tends to pressure, luminosity coefficient will tend to one as P approaches zero. Right? So if luminosity coefficient is one, that means it is an ideal gas. If luminosity coefficient is not one, then it is non-ideal gas. Okay. Any doubts on this? Sir, oh, yep, two by yep, one is equal to P two by P one K. Bad me jo apne derivation abhi dikhaya thena. Oh, thoda repeat kijiye na. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Mere aavaz aare. Aare. Hello. Uh, oh, yep, two by is equal to P two by P one है okay, is equal to आपने हाँ उसके नीचे का जो अब आपने बात आया था ना वो थोड़ा repeat कीजिए ना okay. so यहाँ पर देखा क्या देखा था हमने मैं compared equation three and four right equation three is for real gases delta G or real gases is equal to R T L N F two by F one and delta G for ideal gases is RTL and P2 by P1, right? So when we say real gases, real gases includes ideal gases also because that any real gas at low pressure becomes ideal gas. So for ideal gases, this equation three has to be equal to this equation four, right? Delta G from this equation has to be equal to delta G from this equation, okay? So in that case, right hand side has to be equal what you get is RTL and F2 by F1 is equal to RTL and P2 by P1. RT, RT cancel will go. What you get is LN P2 by P1 is equal to LN F2 by F1. That means F2 by F1 has to be equal to P2 by P1. Okay? So when you say F2 by F1 is equal to P2 by P1, that means vigacity is directly proportional to pressure. Sir, 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 ये वाला हम्म ओके सो वी हैव dg इक्वल टू rt ln phi सो वी इंटीग्रेट फ्रॉम लो प्रेशर p0 टू p सो व्हाट वी गेट इज g minus g0 इज rt ln f by f0 f0 इज विगासिटी इज लो प्रेशर एंड f इज एट विगासिटी एट एक्चुअल प्रेशर सो एट लो प्रेशर वी हैव डिफाइंड स्टैंडर्ड स्टेट विगासिटी इज इक्वल टू प्रेशर राइट सो f0 is at low pressure, it is equal to pressure at low, pre at low pressure. And we also define frequency coefficient as f by p. So f is equal to phi into p. So if we have this equation, what we get is rt ln f is equal to phi into p, f0 is equal to p0. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can write this as rt ln p by p0, the phi is separate kiya humne, to plus rt ln phi. This is simple algebra. 
right? So we are saying that G जो है, this is for real gas, is equal to G zero ये इधर लाया हमने right hand side में, plus R T L N P bar P zero, plus R T L N five, right? So now if we take D G for ideal gas, is equal to R T D L N P. If we again integrate from P zero to P, what will get is G minus G zero is R T L N P bar P zero. ठीक है समझ में आया इक्वेशन सिक्स और सेवन सर आया अभी समझ में समझ में आ गया इक्वेशन सिक्स और सेवन तो इक्वेशन इक्वेशन सेवन से यू कैन टेक जी जीरो ऑन द राइट साइड व्हाट यू गेट इस जी इक्वल टू जी जीरो प्लस आरटीएल एंड पीवा पी जीरो नो दिस इस फॉर आइडियल गैस राइट दिस फॉर आइडियल गैस एंड दिस फॉर रियल ग� so we can write GR for real gas is equal to G0 plus P by P0 is C for ideal gas plus RTL and 5. This is written here. So G for real gas, Gibbs energy for real gas is equal to Gibbs energy for ideal gas plus RTL and 5. And this term actually represents the intermolecular forces of a real gas. Let's look at equation 9. Oh, yes, sir, yes. Okay, and we have to find by standard state F tends to P as P becomes zero or uh, zero or low pressure. So if we define this, then automatically phi is equal to F by P. So if F tends to P, phi will tend to one as pressure reduces to zero or low pressure. Okay. Any doubts so far? Okay, so if it is clear, then let us proceed to next slide. Effect of temperature. इतना समझ में आया तो बोलो, नहीं समझ में आया तो बोलो. Any doubts on this equation nine? There is no comment. Let us proceed. So let's see what is effect of temperature on frigacity and effect of pressure. We'll see both. So now we define G zero molar free energy at very low pressure and F zero frigacity as very low pressure. That is for ideal gas, right? So G for real gas is equal to G zero plus R T L and F by F zero. We derive the answer, right? This one, right? G is equal to G zero plus R T L and F by F zero. Okay. So we can write same thing as R L and F by F zero is equal to T. यहाँ पर लाया हमने G by T minus G zero by T. Similar to what we have done for chemical potential, right? U by T लिया था हमने वहाँ पर, right? लिया था कि नहीं याद आ रहा है फिर तो टेम्परेचर लिया था हमने केमिकल पोटेंशियल का तो वी हैव टेकन म्यू बाय टी बिकॉज़ दैट गिव्स अ सिंपल इक्वेशन यू कैन डू टेक म्यू आल्सो और जी आल्सो बट द इक्वेशन विल नॉट बी वेरी सिंपल सो व्हाट यू डू इज डिफरेंशिएट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टेम्परेचर एट कांस्टेंट प्रेशर व्हाट यू गेट इज आर डबल एन एफ बाय डबल टी एट कांस्टेंट प्रेशर माइनस बिकॉज़ एल एन एफ बाय एफ जीरो मींस एल एन एफ माइनस एल एन एफ जीरो Minus double L N F zero by double T at constant pressure is equal to double G by T by double T at constant pressure minus double G zero by T by double T at constant pressure. Okay, equation level sound yeah. Any doubts on equation level? Okay. So then we will use derive Gibbs Helmholtz equation. H is equal to VDP minus SDT. We know that. So at constant pressure, we get double G by double T. At constant pressure, T is equal to minus S because this is equal to zero. DP is zero. So we get minus S. Now we take 
e of u by v numerator and denominator so that is equal to v denominator into derivative of numerator minus numerator and derivative of denominator by denominator square so we take dava g by t by dava t at constant pressure is equal to denominator is t here into dava g by dava t at constant pressure minus numerator which is g and dava t by dava t is 1 divided by t square ठीक है तो कुछ थर्टी समझ में आया जस्ट टेक मी डेरिवेटिव ऑफ डी बाई टी विज पर टू टेम्परेचर एट कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेशर सब्सिडिंग ट्वेल्व इन थर्टीन इज जो टर्म है ये यहाँ सब्सिड करेंगे तो वॉट इज गेट इज डबा जी बाई टी बाई डबा टी एट कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेशर इज इक्वल टू माइनस दिस इज माइनस एस या तो माइनस एस इंटू टी माइनस जी बाई टी स्क्वायर ठीक है And we know g is equal to h minus t s, so minus h, which we are left is minus g minus s g or t s. And this is what this is minus h right? This term in equation fourteen. So we can write minus h by t square. So what we get is double g by t by double t at constant pressure is equal to minus h by t square. This is Phillips Helmholtz equation. This is similar to what we saw in chemical potential, right? वहाँ पर क्या था equation? याद है किसी को? वहाँ पर था double u i by t क्वेश्चन Correct terms are not changed because we are just replacing this Gibbs energy with partial molar Gibbs energy, so we have to replace this enthalpy with partial molar enthalpy. But the equation is same. So this is called Gibbs Helmholtz equation. And sometimes they ask you in exam for derivation of Gibbs Helmholtz equation. Okay, so for our baki hai, we can finish it off in two minutes. So you can take equation 16 and substitute in 11. Okay, equation 11 ये था हमारा जो derive किया था हमने पहले किया था. Now you take this thing and put in equation 11. What we get is R into double ln F by double T at constant pressure minus double ln F zero by T double T at constant pressure. The left hand side is equal to इसको minus H by T square में डाला ये equation. और यहाँ पर माइनस ऑफ माइनस एच जीरो यहाँ पर जी जीरो है तो एच जीरो आएगा सुपर स्टेट राइट सो फॉर आइडियल गैसेस एट वेरी लो प्रेशर एफ जीरो इक्वल टू पी जीरो तो इक्वेशन लेवन बिकम्स और दिस इक्वेशन बिकम्स दिस इक्वेशन इज बिकम बिकॉज एफ जीरो इक्वल टू पी जीरो राइट यहाँ पर पी जीरो आएगा वॉट इज गेट इज आर एल एन टी डबल एन एफ बटा वट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इक्वल टू एच जीरो हो जाएगा प्लस माइनस एच अपॉन टी स्क्वायर एंड दिस टर्म विल बिकम जीरो एट लो प्रेशर So there is no effect of temperature.
Yeah, because this stage, this is essentially independent of temperature pressure. T zero by then F T zero by W T which is independent of temperature here, and that's why it becomes zero. So what we get is equation seventeen, which is showing the effect of temperature on fluidity. So if you can measure the enthalpy, you can find out the fluidity. Any questions on equation seventeen? Tomorrow we will see the effect of pressure on fluidity. We have a small size, but we will see tomorrow. Okay. Any questions on this effect of temperature on fluidity? No comments. No 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 difficulties. Okay, so think about it. I'll have put. I think I've added this on the notice of teams files folder. You can check it out. And if you have difficulty, then you can ask tomorrow. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So I'll stop the recording.